All the living things are composed of cells. A single cell is the smallest unit that has all the characteristics of life. Cell is defined as the structural and functional unit of the living body. General characteristics of cell, each cell in the body, needs nutrition and oxygen. Produces its own energy necessary for its growth, repair, and other activities. Eliminates carbon dioxide and other metabolic wastes. Maintains the medium, i.e. the environment for its survival. Shows immediate response to the entry of invaders like bacteria or toxic substances into the body. Reproduces by division. There are some exceptions like neuron, which do not reproduce. Tissue, tissue is defined as the group of cells having similar function. There are many types of tissues in the body. All the tissues are classified into four major types which are called the primary tissues. The primary tissues include, muscle tissue, skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, and cardiac muscle. Nervous tissue, neurons and supporting cells. Epithelial tissue, squamous, columnar and cuboidal epithelial cells. Connective tissue, connective tissue proper, cartilage, bone, and blood. Organ. An organ is defined as the structure that is formed by two or more primary types of tissues, which execute the functions of the organ. Some organs are composed of all the four types of primary tissues. The organs are of two types, namely tubular or hollow organs and compact or parenchymal organs. Some of the organs in the body are brain, heart, lungs, stomach, intestine, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, kidneys, endocrine glands, etc. System, the organ system is defined as group of organs that work together to carry out specific functions of the body. Each system performs a specific function. Digestive system is concerned with digestion of food particles. Excretory system eliminates unwanted substances. Cardiovascular system is responsible for transport of substances between the organs. Respiratory system is concerned with the supply of oxygen and removal of carbon dioxide. Reproductive system is involved in the reproduction of species. Endocrine system is concerned with growth of the body and regulation and maintenance of normal life. Musculoskeletal system is responsible for stability and movements of the body. Nervous system controls the locomotion and other activities including the intellectual functions. Structure of the cell each cell is formed by a cell body and a membrane covering the cell body called the cell membrane. Cell body has two parts, namely nucleus and cytoplasm surrounding the nucleus, Fig 1.1. Thus, the structure of the cell is studied under three headings, cell membrane, cytoplasm, nucleus, cell membrane. Cell membrane is a protective sheath, enveloping the cell body. It is also known as plasma membrane or plasma lemma. This membrane separates the fluid outside the cell called extracellular fluid, ECF, and the fluid inside the cell called intracellular fluid, ICF. The cell membrane is a semi-permeable membrane. So, there is free exchange of certain substances between ECF and ICF. Thickness of the cell membrane varies from 75 to 111A, Fig 1.2. Composition of cell membrane, cell membrane is composed of three types of substances, proteins, 55%, lipids, 40%, carbohydrates, 5%. Structure of cell membrane, on the basis of structure, cell membrane is called a unit membrane or a three-layered membrane. The electron microscopic study reveals three layers of cell membrane, namely, one central electron lucent layer and two electron dense layers. The two electron dense layers are placed one on either side of the central layer. The central layer is a lipid layer formed by lipid substances. The other two layers are protein layers formed by proteins. Cell membrane contains some carbohydrate molecules also. 
Structural Model of the Cell Membrane, 1 Daniele Davzen Model, Daniele Davzen Model was the first proposed basic model of membrane structure. It was proposed by James F. Daniele and Hugh Davzen in 1935. And it was accepted by scientists for many years. This model was basically a sandwich of lipids covered by proteins on both sides. Two-unit membrane model, in 1957, J.D. Robertson replaced Daniele Davzen model by unit membrane model on the basis of electron microscopic studies. Three-fluid mosaic model, later in 1972, S.J. Singer and G.L. Nicholson proposed the fluid mosaic model. According to them, the membrane is a fluid with mosaic of proteins, mosaic means pattern formed by arrangement of different colored pieces of stone, tile, glass, or other such materials. This model is accepted by the scientists till now. In this model, the proteins are found to float in the lipid layer instead of forming the layers of the sandwich type model. Lipid layers of the cell membrane, the central lipid layer is a bilayered structure. This is formed by a thin film of lipids. The characteristic feature of lipid layer is that, it is fluid in nature and not a solid structure. So, the portions of the membrane move from one point to another point along the surface of the cell. The materials dissolved in lipid layer also move to all areas of the cell membrane. Major lipids are, 1 phospholipids, 2 cholesterol, 3 phospholipids, phospholipids are the lipid substances containing phosphorus and fatty acids. Aminophospholipids, sphingomyelins, phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylatholamine, phosphatidylglycerol, phosphatidylserine, and phosphatidylinositol are the phospholipids present in lipid layer of cell membrane. Phospholipid molecules are arranged in two layers, Fig 1.3. Each phospholipid molecule resembles the headed pin in shape. The outer part of the phospholipid molecule is called the head portion and the inner portion is called the tail portion. Head portion is the polar end and it is soluble in water and has strong affinity for water, hydrophilic. Tail portion is the nonpolar end. It is insoluble in water and repelled by water, hydrophobic. Two layers of phospholipids are arranged in such a way that the hydrophobic tail portions meet in the center of the membrane. Hydrophilic head portions of outer layer face the ECF and those of the inner layer face ICF, cytoplasm. Cholesterol, cholesterol molecules are arranged in between the phospholipid molecules. Phospholipids are soft and oily structures and cholesterol helps to pack the phospholipids in the membrane. So, cholesterol is responsible for the structural integrity of lipid layer of the cell membrane. Functions of lipid layer in cell membrane lipid layer of the cell membrane is a semi-permeable membrane and allows only the fat-soluble substances to pass through it. Thus, the fat-soluble substances like oxygen, carbon dioxide, and alcohol can pass through this lipid layer. The water-soluble substances such as glucose, urea, and electrolytes cannot pass through this layer. Protein layers of the cell membrane, protein layers of the cell membrane are electron-dense layers. These layers cover the two surfaces of the central lipid layer. Protein layers give protection to the central lipid layer. The protein substances present in these layers are mostly glycoproteins. Protein molecules are classified into two categories, one integral proteins or transmembrane proteins. Two peripheral proteins or peripheral membrane proteins. Integral proteins. Integral or transmembrane proteins are the proteins that pass through entire thickness of cell membrane from one side to the other side. These proteins are tightly bound with the cell membrane. Examples of integral proteins, 1 cell adhesion proteins, 2 cell junction proteins, 3 some carrier, transport, proteins, 4 channel proteins, 5 some hormone receptors, 6 antigens. 7 some enzymes 8 peripheral proteins peripheral proteins or peripheral membrane proteins are the proteins which are partially embedded in the outer and inner surfaces of the cell membrane and do not penetrate the cell membrane peripheral proteins are loosely bound with integral proteins or lipid layer of cell membrane so 
these protein molecules dissociate readily from the cell membrane. Examples of peripheral proteins, proteins of cytoskeleton. Some carrier, transport, proteins. Some enzymes. Functions of proteins in cell membrane. One integral proteins provide the structural integrity of the cell membrane. Two channel proteins help in the diffusion of water soluble substances like glucose and electrolytes. Three carrier or transport proteins help in the transport of substances across the cell membrane by means of active or passive transport. Four pump, some carrier proteins act as pumps, by which ions are transported actively across the cell membrane. Five receptor proteins serve as the receptor sites for hormones and neurotransmitters. Six enzymes, some of the protein molecules form the enzymes and control chemical, metabolic, reactions within the cell membrane. Seven antigens, some proteins act as antigens and induce the process of antibody formation. Eight cell adhesion molecules or the integral proteins are responsible for attachment of cells to their neighbors or to basal lamina. Carbohydrates of the cell membrane. Some of the carbohydrate molecules present in cell membrane are attached to proteins and form glycoproteins, proteoglycans. Some carbohydrate molecules are attached to lipids and form glycolipids. Carbohydrate molecules form a thin and loose covering over the entire surface of the cell membrane called glycocalyx. Functions of carbohydrates in cell membranes. Carbohydrate molecules are negatively charged and do not permit the negatively charged substances to move in and out of the cell glycocalyx from the neighboring cells helps in the tight fixation of cells with one another. Three some carbohydrate molecules function as the receptors for some hormones. Functions of cell membrane. Protective function, cell membrane protects the cytoplasm and the organelles present in the cytoplasm. Selective permeability, Cell membrane acts as a semi-permeable membrane, which allows only some substances to pass through it and acts as a barrier for other substances. Absorptive function, nutrients are absorbed into the cell through the cell membrane. Excretory function, metabolites and other waste products from the cell are excreted out through the cell membrane. Exchange of gases, Oxygen enters the cell from the blood and carbon dioxide leaves the cell and enters the blood through the cell membrane. Maintenance of shape and size of the cell, cell ME membrane is responsible for the maintenance of shape and size of the cell. Cytoplasm Cytoplasm of the cell is the jelly-like material formed by 80% of water. It contains a clear liquid portion called cytosol and various particles of different shape and size. These particles are proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, or electrolytes in nature. Cytoplasm also contains many organelles with distinct structure and function. Cytoplasm formed of two zone. Ectoplasm, peripheral part of cytoplasm, situated just beneath the cell membrane. Endoplasm, inner part of cytoplasm, interposed between the ectoplasm and the nucleus. Organelles in cytoplasm. Cytoplasmic organelles are the cellular structures embedded in the cytoplasm. Organelles are considered as small organs of the cell. Some organelles are bound by limiting membrane and others do not have limiting membrane. Box 1.1. Each organelle is having a definite structure and specific functions. Table 1.1. Organelles with limiting membrane. Endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum is a network of tubular and microsomal vesicular structures which are interconnected with one another. It is covered by a limiting membrane which is formed by proteins and biliar lipids. The lumen of endoplasmic reticulum contains a fluid medium called endoplasmic matrix. The diameter of the lumen is about 400 to 700 A. The endoplasmic reticulum forms the lin between nucleus and cell membrane by connecting the cell membrane with the nuclear membrane. Types of endoplasmic reticulum Endoplasmic reticulum is of two types, namely, rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Both the types are interconnected and continuous with one another. Depending upon the activities of the cells, the rough endoplasmic reticulum changes to smooth endoplasmic reticulum and vice versa. Rough endoplasmic reticulum 
it is the endoplasmic reticulum with rough, bumpy, or bead-like appearance. Rough appearance is due to the attachment of granular ribosomes to its outer surface. Hence, it is also called the granular endoplasmic reticulum, Fig 1.4. Rough endoplasmic reticulum is vesicular or tubular in structure. Functions of rough endoplasmic reticulum Synthesis of proteins Rough endoplasmic reticulum is concerned with the synthesis of proteins in the cell. It is involved with the synthesis of mainly those proteins which are secreted from the cells such as insulin from beta cells of islets of Langerhans in pancreas and antibodies from B lymphocytes. Ribosomes arrange the amino acids into small units of proteins and transport them into the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Here, the carbohydrates are added to the protein units forming the glycosylated proteins or glycoproteins, which are arranged in the form of reticular vesicles. These vesicles are transported mainly to Golgi apparatus for further modification and processing. Few vesicles are transported to other cytoplasmic organelles. 1. Degradation of worn-out organelles Rough endoplasmic reticulum also plays an important role in the degradation of worn-out cytoplasmic organelles like mitochondria. It wraps itself around the worn-out organelles and forms a vacuole which is often called the autophagosome. Autophagosome is digested by lysosomal enzymes, see below for details. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum It is the endoplasmic reticulum with smooth appearance. It is also called a granular reticulum. It is formed by many interconnected tubules. So, it is also called tubular endoplasmic reticulum. Functions of smooth endoplasmic reticulum 1. Synthesis of non-protein substance Smooth endoplasmic reticulum is responsible for synthesis of non-protein substances such as cholesterol and steroid. This type of endoplasmic reticulum is abundant in cells that are involved in the synthesis of lipids, phospholipids, lipoprotein substances, steroid hormones, sebum, etc. In most of the other cells, smooth endoplasmic reticulum is less extensive than the rough endoplasmic reticulum. 2. Role in cellular metabolism Outer surface of smooth endoplasmic reticulum contains many enzymes which are involved in various metabolic processes of the cell. 3. Storage and metabolism of calcium Smooth endoplasmic reticulum is the major site of storage and metabolism of calcium. In skeletal muscle fibers, it releases calcium which is necessary to trigger the muscle contraction. 4. Catabolism and detoxification Smooth endoplasmic reticulum is also concerned with catabolism and detoxification of toxic substances like some drugs and carcinogens, cancer-producing substances, in the liver. Golgi apparatus Golgi apparatus or Golgi body or Golgi complex is a membrane-bound organelle, involved in the processing of proteins. It is present in all the cells except red blood cells. It is named after the discoverer Camillo Golgi. Usually, each cell has one Golgi apparatus. Some of the cells may have more than one Golgi apparatus. Each Golgi apparatus consists of 5 to 8 flattened membranous sacs called the cisterni. Golgi apparatus is situated near the nucleus. It has two ends or faces, namely cis face and trans face. The cis face is positioned near the endoplasmic reticulum. Reticular vesicles from endoplasmic reticulum enter the Golgi apparatus through cis face. The trans face is situated near the cell membrane. The processed substances make their exit from Golgi apparatus through trans face, Fig 1.5. Functions of Golgi apparatus Major functions of Golgi apparatus are processing, packing, labeling, and delivery of proteins and other molecules like lipids to different parts of the cell. 1. Processing of materials. Vesicles containing glycoproteins and lipids are transported into Golgi apparatus. Here, the glycoproteins and lipids are modified and processed. 2. Packaging of materials. All the processed materials are packed in the form of secretory granules, secretory vesicles, and lysosomes, which are transported either out of the cell or to another part of the cell. Because of this, Golgi apparatus is called the post office of the cell. 
3. Labeling and delivery of materials. Finally, the Golgi apparatus sorts out the processed and packed materials and labels them, such as phosphate group, depending upon the chemical content for delivery, distribution, to their proper destinations. Hence, the Golgi apparatus is called shipping department of the cell. Lysosomes Lysosomes are the membrane-bound vesicular organelles found throughout the cytoplasm. The lysosomes are formed by Golgi apparatus. The enzymes synthesized in rough endoplasmic reticulum are processed and packed in the form of small vesicles in the Golgi apparatus. Then, these vesicles are pinched off from Golgi apparatus and become the lysosomes. Among the organelles of the cytoplasm, the lysosomes have the thickest covering membrane. The membrane is formed by a biliard lipid material. It has many small granules which contain hydrolytic enzymes. Functions of lysosomes Lysosomes are often called garbage system of the cell because of their degradation activity. About 50 different hydrolytic enzymes, known as acid hydroxy losses are present in the lysosomes, through which lysosomes execute their functions. Important lysosomal enzymes 1 proteases, which hydrolyze the proteins into amino acids. 2 lipases, which hydrolyze the lipids into fatty acids and glycerides. 3 amylases, which hydrolyze the polysaccharides into glucose. 4 nucleases, which hydrolyze the nucleic acids into mononucleotides. Mechanism of lysosomal function, Lysosomal functions involve two mechanisms, one heterophagy, digestion of extracellular materials engulfed by the cell via endocytosis. Two autophagy, digestion of intracellular materials such as worn out cytoplasmic organelles. Specific functions of lysosomes, three degradation of macromolecules. Macromolecules are engulfed by the cell by means of endocytosis, phagocytosis, pinocytosis, or receptor-mediated endocytosis, Chapter 3. The macromolecules such as bacteria, engulfed by the cell via phagocytosis are called phagosomes or vacuoles. The other macromolecules taken inside via pinocytosis or receptor-mediated endocytosis are called endosomes. The primary lysosome fuses with the phagosome or endosome to form the secondary lysosome. The pH in the secondary lysosome becomes acidic and the lysosomal enzymes are activated. The bacteria and the other macromolecules are digested and degraded by these enzymes. The secondary lysosome containing these degraded waste products moves through cytoplasm and fuses with cell membrane. Now the waste products are eliminated by exocytosis. 2. Degradation of worn out organelles. The rough endoplasmic reticulum wraps itself around the worn-out organelles like mitochondria and form the vacuoles called autophagosomes. One primary lysosome fuses with one autophagosome to form the secondary lysosome. The enzymes in the secondary lysosome are activated. Now, these enzymes digest the contents of autophagosome. 3. Removal of excess secretory products in the cells. Lysosomes in the cells of the secretory glands remove the excess secretory products by degrading the secretory granules. 4. Secretory function, secretory lysosomes. Recently, lysosomes having secretory function called secretory lysosomes are found in some of the cells, particularly in the cells of immune system. The conventional lysosomes are modified into secretory lysosomes by combining with secretory granules, which contain the particular secretory product of the cell. Lysosomes in the cytotoxic T lymphocytes and natural killer NK, cells secrete perforin and granzymes, which destroy both viral infected cells and tumor cells. Perforin is a poor forming protein that initiates cell death. Granzymes belong to the family of serine proteases, enzymes that dislodge the peptide bonds of the proteins, and cause the cell death by apoptosis. Secretory lysosomes of melanocytes secrete melanin. Secretory lysosomes of mast cells secrete serotonin, which is a vasoconstrictor substance and inflammatory mediator. Peroxisomes. Peroxisomes or microbodies are the membrane-limited vesicles like the lysosomes. Unlike lysosomes, 
peroxisomes are pinched off from endoplasmic reticulum and not from the Golgi apparatus. Peroxisomes contain some oxidative enzymes such as catalase, urate oxidase, and diamino acid oxidase. Functions of peroxisomes Peroxisomes break down the fatty acids by means of a process called beta oxidation, this is the major function of peroxisomes. Degrade the toxic substances such as hydrogen peroxide and other metabolic products by means of detoxification. A large number of peroxisomes are present in the cells of liver, which is the major organ for detoxification. Hydrogen peroxide is formed from poisons or alcohol, which enter the cell. Whenever hydrogen peroxide is produced in the cell, the peroxisomes are ruptured and the oxidative enzymes are released. These oxidases destroy hydrogen peroxide and the enzymes which are necessary for the production of hydrogen peroxide. Form the major site of oxygen utilization in the cells. Accelerate gluconeogenesis from fats. Degrade purine to uric acid. Participate in the formation of myelin. 8. Play a role in the formation of bile acids. Centrosome and centrioles. Centrosome is the membrane-bound cellular organelle situated almost in the center of cell, close to nucleus. It consists of two cylindrical structures called centrioles which are made up of proteins. Centrioles are responsible for the movement of chromosomes during cell division. Secretory vesicles. Secretory vesicles are the organelles with limiting membrane and contain the secretory substances. These vesicles are formed in the endoplasmic reticulum and are processed and packed in Golgi apparatus. Secretory vesicles are present throughout the cytoplasm. When necessary, these vesicles are ruptured and secretory substances are released into the cytoplasm. Mitochondrion Mitochondrion, plural equals mitochondria, is a membrane-bound cytoplasmic organelle concerned with production of energy. It is a rod-shaped or oval-shaped structure with a diameter of 0.5 to 1 mu. It is covered by a billiard membrane, Fig 1.6. The outer membrane is smooth and encloses the contents of mitochondrion. This membrane contains various enzymes such as acetyl-CoA synthetase and glycerol phosphate acetyltransferase. The inner membrane is folded in the form of shelf-like inward projections called Christi and it covers the inner matrix space. Christi contain many enzymes and other protein molecules which are involved in respiration and synthesis of adenosine triphosphate, ADP. Because of these functions, the enzymes, and other protein molecules in Christi are collectively known as respiratory chain or electron transport system. Enzymes and other proteins of respiratory chain. 1. Succinic dehydrogenase. 2. Dihydronicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, NADH. Dehydrogenase. 3. Cytochrome oxidase. 4. Cytochrome C. 5. ADP synthase. Inner cavity of mitochondrion is filled with matrix which contains many enzymes. Mitochondrion moves freely in the cytoplasm of the cell. It is capable of reproducing itself. Mitochondrion contains its own deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, which is responsible for many enzymatic actions. In fact, mitochondrion is the only organelle other than nucleus, which has its own DNA. Functions of mitochondrion 1. Production of energy Mitochondrion is called the powerhouse or power plant of the cell because it produces the energy required for cellular functions. The energy is produced during the oxidation of digested food particles like proteins, carbohydrates and lipids by the oxidative enzymes in Christi. During the oxidative process, water and carbon dioxide are produced with release of energy. The released energy Y is stored in mitochondria and used later for synthesis of ADP. 2. Synthesis of ADP The components of respiratory chain in mitochondrion are responsible for the synthesis of ADP by utilizing the energy by oxidative phosphorylation. ADP molecules diffuse throughout the cell from mitochondrion. Whenever energy is needed for cellular activity, the ADP molecules are broken down. 4. Apoptosis Cytochrome C and second mitochondria derived activator of caspases, SMAC, 
slash Diablo secreted in mitochondria are involved in apoptosis, see below. 4. Other functions. Other functions of mitochondria include storage of calcium and detoxification of ammonia in liver. Organelles without limiting membrane. Ribosomes. Ribosomes are the organelles without limiting ME membrane. These organelles are granular and small dot-like structures with a diameter of 15 nanometers. Ribosomes are made up of 35% of proteins and 65% of ribonucleic acid, RNA. RNA present in ribosomes is called ribosomal RNA, rRNA. Ribosomes are concerned with protein synthesis in the cell. Types of ribosomes. Ribosomes are of two types, ribosomes that are attached to rough endoplasmic reticulum. Free ribosomes that are distributed in the cytoplasm. Functions of ribosomes. Ribosomes are called protein factories because of their role in the synthesis of proteins. Messenger RNA, mRNA, carries the genetic code for protein synthesis from nucleus to the ribosomes. The ribosomes, in turn arrange the amino acids into small units of proteins. Ribosomes attached to rough endoplasmic reticulum are involved in the synthesis of proteins such as the enzymatic proteins, hormonal proteins, lysosomal proteins and the proteins of the cell membrane. Free ribosomes are responsible for the synthesis of proteins in hemoglobin, peroxisome, and mitochondria. Cytoskeleton Cytoskeleton is the cellular organelle present throughout the cytoplasm. It determines the shape of the cell and gives support to the cell. It is a complex network of structures with varying sizes. In addition to determining the shape of the cell, it is also essential for the cellular movements and the response of the cell to external stimuli. Cytoskeleton formed of three components, one microtubule, two intermediate filaments, three microfilaments, microtubules. Microtubules are the straight, hollow, and tubular structures of the cytoskeleton. These organelles without the limiting membrane are arranged in different bundles. Each tubule has a diameter of 20 to 30 nanometers. Length of microtubule varies and it may be 1000 times more than the thickness. Structurally, the microtubules are formed by bundles of globular protein called tubulin, Fig 1.7. Tubulin has two subunits, namely alpha subunit and beta subunit. Functions of microtubules Microtubules may function alone or join with other proteins to form more complex structures like cilia, flagella, or centrioles and perform various functions. 1. Determine the shape of the cell. 2. Give structural strength to the cell. 3. Act like conveyor belts which allow the movement of granules, vesicles, protein molecules, and some organelles like mitochondria to different parts of the cell chromosomes during mitosis 4 are responsible for the movement of centrioles and the complex cellular structures like cilia. Intermediate filaments Intermediate filaments are the structures that form a network around the nucleus and extend to the periphery of the cell. Diameter of each filament is about 10 nanometers. The intermediate filaments are formed by rope-like polymers, which are made up of fibrous proteins, Fig 1.8. Subclasses of intermediate filaments. Intermediate filaments are divided into five subclasses, one keratins, in epithelial cells. Three neurofilaments, in nerve cells. Two glial filaments, in astrocytes. Four vimentin, in many types of cells. Five desmin, in muscle fibers. Functions of intermediate filaments. Intermediate filaments help to maintain the shape of the cell. These filaments also connect the adjacent cells through desmosomes. Microfilaments. Microfilaments are long and fine thread-like structures with a diameter of about 3 to 6 nanometers. These filaments are made up of non-tubular contractile proteins called actin and myosin. Actin is more abundant than myosin. Microfilaments are present throughout the cytoplasm. The microfilaments present in ectoplasm contain only actin molecules, Fig 1.9, and those present in endoplasm contain both actin and myosin molecules. Microfilaments are present throughout the cytoplasm. 
the microfilaments present in ectoplasm contain only actin molecules, Fig 1.9, and those present in endoplasm contain both actin and myosin molecules. Functions of microfilaments Microfilaments, give structural strength to the cell. Provide resistance to the cell against the pulling forces. Are responsible for cellular movements like contraction, gliding and cytokinesis, partition of cytoplasm during cell division. Nucleus Nucleus is the most prominent and the largest cellular organelle. It has a diameter of 10 to 22 and occupies about 10% of total volume of the cell. Nucleus is present in all the cells in the body except the red blood cells. The cells with nucleus are called eukaryotes and those without nucleus are known as prokaryotes. Presence of nucleus is necessary for cell division. Most of the cells have only one nucleus, uninucleated cells. Few types of cells like skeletal muscle cells have many nuclei, multinucleated cells. Generally, the nucleus is located in the center of the cell. It is mostly spherical in shape. However, the shape and situation of nucleus vary in some cells. Structure of nucleus Nucleus is covered by a membrane called nuclear ME membrane and contains many components. Major components of nucleus are nucleoplasm, chromatin and nucleolus. Nuclear membrane Nuclear membrane is double-layered and porous in nature. This allows the nucleoplasm to communicate with the cytoplasm. The outer layer of nuclear membrane is continuous with the membrane of endoplasmic reticulum. The space between the two layers of nuclear membrane is continuous with the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum. Pores of the nuclear membrane are guarded, lined, by protein molecules. Diameter of the pores is about 80 to 100 nanometers. However, it is decreased to about 7 to 9 nanometers because of the attachment of protein molecules with the periphery of the pores. Exchange of materials between nucleoplasm and cytoplasm occurs through these pores. Nucleoplasm Nucleoplasm is a highly viscous fluid that forms the ground substance of the nucleus. It is similar to cytoplasm present outside the nucleus. Nucleoplasm surrounds chromatin and nucleolus. It contains dense fibrillar network of proteins called the nuclear matrix and many substances such as nucleotides and enzymes. The nuclear matrix forms the structural framework for organizing chromatin. The soluble liquid part of nucleoplasm is known as nuclear hyaloplasm. Chromatin Chromatin is a thread-like material made up of large molecules of DNA. The DNA molecules are compactly packed with the help of a specialized basic protein called histone. So, chromatin is referred as DNA histone complex. It forms the major bulk of nuclear material. DNA is a double helix which wraps around central core of eight histone molecules to form the fundamental packing unit of chromatin called nucleosome. Nucleosomes are packed together tightly with the help of a histone molecule to form a chromatin fiber. Just before cell division, the chromatin condenses to form chromosome. Chromosomes Chromosome is the rod-shaped nuclear structure that carries a complete blueprint of all the hereditary characteristics of that species. A chromosome is formed from a single DNA molecule coiled around histone molecules. Each DNA contains many genes. Normally, the chromosomes are not visible in the nucleus under microscope. Only during cell division, the chromosomes are visible under microscope. This is because DNA becomes more tightly packed just before cell division, which makes the chromosome visible during cell division. All the dividing cells of the body except reproductive cells contain 23 pairs of chromosomes. Each pair consists of one chromosome inherited from mother and one from father. The cells with 23 pairs of chromosomes are called diploid cells. The reproductive cells called gametes or sex cells contain only 23 single chromosomes. These cells are called haploid cells. Nucleolus Nucleolus is a small, round granular structure of the nucleus. Each nucleus contains one or more nucleoli. The nucleolus contains RNA and some proteins, which are similar to those found in ribosomes. 
the RNA is synthesized by five different pairs of chromosomes and stored in the nucleolus. Later, it is condensed to form the subunits of ribosomes. All the subunits formed in the nucleolus are transported to cytoplasm through the pores of nuclear membrane. In the cytoplasm, these subunits fuse to form ribosomes, which play an essential role in the formation of proteins. Functions of Nucleus Major functions of nucleus are the control of cellular activities and storage of hereditary material. Several processes are involved in the nuclear functions. One control of all the cell activities that include metabolism, protein synthesis, growth, and reproduction, cell division. 2. Synthesis of RNA. 3. Formation of subunits of ribosomes. 4. Sending genetic instruction to the cytoplasm for protein synthesis through messenger RNA, mRNA. 5. Control of the cell division through genes. 6. Storage of hereditary information, in genes, and transformation of this information from one generation of the species to the next. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, is a nucleic acid that carries the genetic information to the offspring of an organism. DNA forms the chemical basis of hereditary characters. It contains the instruction for the synthesis of proteins in the ribosomes. Gene is a part of a DNA molecule. DNA is present in the nucleus, chromosome, and mitochondria of the cell. The DNA present in the nucleus is responsible for the formation of RNA. RNA regulates the synthesis of proteins by ribosomes. DNA in mitochondria is called nonchromosomal DNA. Structure of DNA DNA is a double-stranded complex nucleic acid. It is formed by deoxyribose, phosphoric acid, and four types of bases. Each DNA molecule consists of two polynucleotide chains, which are twisted around one another in the form of a double helix. The two chains are formed by the sugar deoxyribose and phosphate. These two substances form the backbone of DNA molecule. Both chains of DNA are connected with each other by some organic bases, Fig 1.10. Nucleotides. Each nucleotide is formed by 1 deoxyribose, sugar, 2 phosphate, 3 1 of the following organic, nitrogenous, bases, 4 deoxyribose, sugar, 5 phosphate, 6 1 of the following organic, nitrogenous, bases, apurines, adenine, A, guanine, G, B pyrimidines. Cytosine, C. Thymine, T. The strands of DNA are arranged in such a way that both are bound by specific pairs of bases. The adenine of one strand binds specifically with thymine of opposite strand. Similarly, the cytosine of one strand binds with guanine of the other strand. DNA forms the component of chromosomes, which carries the hereditary information. The hereditary information that is encoded in DNA is called genome. Each DNA molecule is divided into discrete units called genes. Gene Gene is a portion of DNA molecule that contains the message or code for the synthesis of a specific protein from amino acids. It is like a book that contains the information necessary for protein synthesis. Gene is considered as the basic hereditary unit of the cell. From amino acids it is like a book that contains the information necessary for protein synthesis. Gene is considered as the basic hereditary unit of the cell. In the nucleotide of DNA, three of the successive base pairs are together called a triplet or a codon. Each codon codes or forms code word, information, for one amino acid. There are 20 amino acids and there is separate code for each amino acid. For example, the triplet CCA is the code for glycine and GGC is the code for proline. Thus, each gene forms the code word for a particular protein to be synthesized in ribosome, outside the nucleus, from amino acids. Genetic Disorders A genetic disorder is a disorder that occurs because of the abnormalities in an individual's genetic material, genome. Genetic disorders are either hereditary disorders or due to defect in genes. Causes of Gene Disorders 
Genetic disorders occur due to two causes, genetic variation, presence of a different form of gene. Genetic mutation, generally, mutation means an alteration or a change in nature, form, or quality. Genetic mutation refers to change of the DNA sequence within a gene or chromosome of an organism, which results in the creation of a new character. Classification of genetic disorders Genetic disorders are classified into four types, one single gene disorders, two multifactorial genetic disorders, three chromosomal disorders, four mitochondrial DNA disorders, single gene disorders. Single gene disorders or Mendelian or monogenic disorders occur because of variation or mutation in one single gene. Examples include sickle cell anemia and Huntington's disease. Multifactorial genetic disorders. Multifactorial genetic disorders or polygenic disorders are caused by combination of environmental factors and mutations in multiple genes. Examples are coronary heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, arthritis, and diabetes. 3. Chromosomal disorders. Chromosomal disorder is a genetic disorder caused by abnormalities in chromosome. It is also called chromosomal abnormality, anomaly, or aberration. It often results in genetic disorders which involve physical or mental abnormalities. Chromosomal disorder is caused by numerical abnormality or structural abnormality. Structural abnormality, alteration, of chromosomes which leads to disorders like chromosome instability syndromes, group of inherited diseases which cause malignancies. Numerical abnormality of chromosomes which is of two types, a monosomy due to absence of one chromosome from normal diploid number. Example is Turner's syndrome, which is characterized by physical disabilities B trisoma due to the presence of one extra chromosome along with normal pair of chromosomes in the cells. Example is Down syndrome, which is characterized by physical disabilities and mental retardation. 3. Mitochondrial DNA Disorders Mitochondrial DNA disorders are the genetic disorders caused by the mutations in the DNA of mitochondria, non-chromosomal DNA. Examples are Kern-Sayer syndrome, neuromuscular disorder characterized by myopathy, cardiomyopathy, and paralysis of ocular muscles and labors hereditary optic neuropathy, disease characterized by degeneration of retina and loss of vision. Ribonucleic acid Ribonucleic acid, RNA, is a nucleic acid that contains a long chain of nucleotide units. It is similar to DNA but contains ribose instead of deoxyribose. Various functions coded in the genes are carried out in the cytoplasm of the cell by RNA. RNA is formed from DNA. Structure of RNA Each RNA molecule consists of a single strand of polynucleotide unlike the double-stranded DNA. Each nucleotide in RNA is formed by 1 ribose sugar 2 phosphate. 3-1 of the following organic bases, A purines, adenine, A. Guanine, G. B pyrimidines, uracil, U. Cytosine, C. Uracil replaces the thymine of DNA and it has similar structure of thymine. Types of RNA RNA is of three types. Each type of RNA plays a specific role in protein synthesis. The three types of RNA are, one messenger RNA, mRNA. Messenger RNA carries the genetic code of the amino acid sequence for synthesis of protein from the DNA to the cytoplasm. Two transfer RNA tRNA. Transfer RNA is responsible for decoding the genetic message present in mRNA. 3. Ribosomal RNA, rRNA. Ribosomal RNA is present within the ribosome and forms a part of the structure of ribosome. It is responsible for the assembly of protein from amino acids in the ribosome. Gene expression. Gene expression is the process by which the information, code word, encoded in the gene is converted into functional gene product or document of instruction RNA, that is used for protein synthesis. Gene expression involves two steps, transcription. Translation. Transcription of genetic code. The word transcription means copying. It indicates the copying of genetic code from DNA to RNA. 
the proteins are synthesized in the ribosomes which are present in the cytoplasm. However, the synthesis of different proteins depends upon the information, sequence of codon, encoded in the genes of the DNA which is present in the nucleus. Since DNA is a macromolecule, it cannot pass through the pores of the nuclear membrane and enter the cytoplasm. But, the information from DNA must be sent to ribosome. So, the gene has to be transcribed, copied, into mRNA which is developed from DNA. Thus, the first stage in the protein synthesis is transcription of genetic code, which occurs within the nucleus. It involves the formation of mRNA and simultaneous copying or transfer of information from DNA to mRNA. The mRNA enters the cytoplasm from the nucleus and activates the ribosome resulting in protein synthesis. The formation of mRNA from DNA is facilitated by the enzyme RNA polymerase. Translation of Genetic Code Translation is the process by which protein synthesis occurs in the ribosome of the cell under the direction of genetic instruction carried by mRNA from DNA. Or, it is the process by which the mRNA is read by ribosome to produce a protein. This involves the role of other two types of RNA, namely tRNA and rRNA. The mRNA moves out of nucleus into the cytoplasm. Now, a group of ribosomes called polysome gets attached to mRNA. The sequence of codons in mRNA are exposed and recognized by the complementary sequence of base in tRNA. The complementary sequence of base is called antigodon. According to the sequence of bases in antigodon, different amino acids are transported from the cytoplasm into the ribosome by tRNA that acts as a carrier. With the help of rRNA, the protein molecules are assembled from amino acids. The protein synthesis occurs in the ribosomes which are attached to rough endoplasmic reticulum. Growth factors. Dot growth factors are proteins which act as cell signaling molecules like cytokines, chapter 17, and hormones, chapter 65. These factors bind with specific surface receptors of the target cell and activate proliferation, differentiation, and slash or maturation of these cells. Dot often, the term growth factor is interchangeably used with the term cytokine. But growth factors are distinct from cytokines. Growth factors act on the cells of the growing tissues. But cytokines are concerned with the cells of immune system and hemopoietic cells. Many growth factors are identified. The known growth factors are, one platelet-derived growth factor, PDGF, Chapter 18. Two colony-stimulating factors, CSF, Chapter 16. Three nerve growth factors, NGF, Chapter 134. Four neurotropins, Chapter 134. Five erythropoietin, Chapter 10. 1 thrombopoietin, Chapter 18. 2 insulin like growth factors, IGF, Chapter 66. 3 epidermal growth factor, present in keratinocytes and fibroblasts. It inhibits growth of hair follicles and cancer cells. 4 basic fibroblast growth factor, present in blood vessels. It is concerned with the formation of new blood vessels. 5 myostatin, present in skeletal muscle fibers. It controls skeletal muscle growth. 6. Transforming growth factors, TGF, present in transforming cells, cells undergoing differentiation, and in large quantities in tumors and cancerous tissue. TGF is of two types, TGF alpha secreted in brain, keratinocytes, and macrophages. It is concerned with growth of epithelial cells and wound healing. TGF beta secreted by hepatic cells, T lymphocytes, B lymphocytes, macrophages, and mast cells. When the liver attains the maximum size in adults, it controls liver growth by inhibiting proliferation of hepatic cells. TGF beta also causes immunosuppression. Cell death. Cell death occurs by two distinct processes apoptosis, necrosis, apoptosis. Apoptosis is defined as the natural or programmed death of the cell under genetic control. Originally, 
Apoptosis refers to the process by which the leaves fall from trees in autumn, in Greek, apoptosis means falling leaves. It is also called cell suicide since the genes of the cell play a major role in the death. This type of programmed cell death is a normal phenomenon and it is essential for normal development of the body. In contrast to necrosis, apoptosis usually does not produce inflammatory reactions in the neighboring tissues. Functional Significance of Apoptosis The purpose of apoptosis is to remove unwanted cells without causing any stress or damage to the neighboring cells. The functional significance of apoptosis, one plays a vital role in cellular homeostasis. About 10 million cells are produced every day in human body by mitosis. An equal number of cells die by apoptosis. This helps in cellular homeostasis too useful for removal of a cell that is damaged beyond repair by a virus or a toxin 3 an essential event during the development and in adult stage. Examples, 1 a large number of neurons are produced during the development of central nervous system. But up to 50% of the neurons are removed by apoptosis during the formation of synapses between neurons. 2. Apoptosis is responsible for the removal of tissues of webs between fingers and toes during developmental stage in fetus. 3. It is necessary for regression and disappearance of duct systems during sex differentiation in fetus, Chapter 74. 4. The cell that loses the contact with neighboring cells or basal lamina in the epithelial tissue dies by apoptosis. This is essential for the death of old enterocytes that shed into the lumen of intestinal glands, Chapter 41. 5. It plays an important role in the cyclic sloughing of the inner layer of endometrium, resulting in menstruation. Chapter 80. 6. Apoptosis removes the autoaggressive T cells and prevents autoimmune diseases. Activation of apoptosis. Apoptosis is activated by either withdrawal of positive signals, survival factors, or arrival of negative signals. Withdrawal of positive signals. Positive signals are the signals which are necessary for the long-time survival of most of the cells. The positive signals are continuously produced by other cells or some chemical stimulants. Best examples of chemical stimulants are, nerve growth factors, for neurons. Interleukin 2, for cells like lymphocytes. The absence or withdrawal of the positive signals activates apoptosis. Arrival of negative signals. Negative signals are the external or internal stimuli which initiate apoptosis. The negative signals are produced during various events like, normal developmental procedures. Cellular stress. Increase in the concentration of intracellular oxidants. Viral infection. Damage of DNA. Exposure to agents like chemotherapeutic drugs, X-rays, ultraviolet rays, and the death receptor ligands. Death receptor ligands and death receptors. Death receptor ligands are the substances which bind with specific cell membrane receptors and initiate the process of apoptosis. The common death receptor ligands are tumor necrosis factors, TNF alpha, TNF beta, and FOS ligand, which binds to the receptor called FOS. Death receptors are the cell membrane receptors which receive the death receptor ligands. Well characterized death receptors are TNF receptor 1, TNFR1, and TNF related apoptosis inducing ligand trail, receptors called DR4 and DR5. Role of mitochondria in apoptosis. External or internal stimuli initiate apoptosis by activating the proteases called caspases, cysteine dependent aspartate specific proteases. Normally, Caspases are suppressed by the inhibitor protein called apoptosis inhibiting factor, AF. When the cells receive the apoptotic stimulus, mitochondria releases two protein materials. First one is cytochrome C and the second protein is called second mitochondria-derived activator of caspases, SMAC, or its homologo Diablo. SMAC slash Diablo inactivates AF so that the inhibitor is inhibited. During this process, SMAC slash Diablo and AF aggregate to form apoptosome which activates caspases. Cytochrome C also facilitates caspase activation. Apoptotic process. Cells show sequence of characteristic morphological changes during apoptosis, viz., 
one activated caspases digest the proteins of cytoskeleton and the cell shrinks and becomes round. 2. Because of shrinkage, the cell losses the contact with neighboring cells or surrounding matrix. 3. Chromatin in the nucleus undergoes degradation and condensation. 4. Nuclear membrane becomes discontinuous and the DNA inside nucleus is cleaved into small fragments. 5. Following the degradation of DNA, the nucleus breaks into many discrete nucleosomal units, which are also called chromatin bodies. 6. Cell membrane breaks and shows bubbled appearance. 7. Finally, the cell breaks into several fragments containing intracellular materials including chromatin bodies and organelles of the cell. Such cellular fragments are called vesicles or apoptotic bodies. 8. Apoptotic bodies are engulfed by phagocytes and dendritic cells. Abnormal apoptosis. Apoptosis within normal limits is beneficial for the body. However, too much or too little apoptosis leads to abnormal conditions. Common abnormalities due to too much apoptosis, 1. Ischemic related injuries. 2. Autoimmune diseases like hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, AIDS, 3. Neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's disease, common abnormalities due to too little apoptosis, cancer, autoimmune lymphoproliferative syndrome, ALPS, necrosis. Necrosis, means dead in Greek, is the uncontrolled and unprogrammed death of cells due to unexpected and accidental damage. It is also called cell murder because the cell is killed by extracellular or external events. After necrosis, the harmful chemical substances released from the dead cells cause damage and inflammation of neighboring tissues. Causes for necrosis Common causes of necrosis are injury, infection, inflammation, infarction, and cancer. Necrosis is induced by both physical and chemical events such as heat, radiation, trauma, hypoxia due to lack of blood flow and exposure to toxins. Necrotic process. Necrosis results in lethal disruption of cell structure and activity. The cell undergoes a series of characteristic changes during necrotic process, viz. One cell swells causing damage of the cell membrane and appearance of many holes in the membrane. Two intracellular contents leak out into the surrounding environment. Five intracellular environment is altered. Six simultaneously, large amount of calcium ions are released by the damaged mitochondria and other organelles. Seven presence of calcium ions drastically affects the organization and activities of proteins in the intracellular components. 8. Calcium ions also induce release of toxic materials that activate the lysosomal enzymes. 9. Lysosomal enzymes cause degradation of cellular components and the cell is totally disassembled resulting in death. 10. Products broken down from the disassembled cell are ingested by neighboring cells. Reaction of neighboring tissues after necrosis. Tissues surrounding the necrotic cells react to the breakdown products of the dead cells, particularly the derivatives of membrane phospholipids like the arachidonic acid. Along with other materials, arachidonic acid causes the following inflammatory reactions in the surrounding tissues, one dilatation of capillaries in the region and thereby increasing local blood flow, two increase in the temperature leading to reddening of the tissues, three release of histamine from these tissues which induces pain in the affected area. 4. Migration of leukocytes and macrophages from blood to the affected area because of increased capillary permeability. 5. Movement of water from blood into the tissues causing local edema. 6. Engulfing and digestion of cellular debris and foreign materials like bacteria by the leukocytes and macrophages. 7. Activation of immune system resulting in the removal of foreign materials. 8. Formation of pus by the dead leukocytes during this process. 9. Finally, tissue growth in the area and wound healing. Cell adaptation. Cell adaptation refers to the changes taking place in a cell in response to environmental changes. Cell adaptation refers to the changes taking place in a cell in response to environmental changes. Normal functioning of the cell is always threatened by various factors such as stress, chemical agents, diseases, and environmental hazards. Yet, 
the cell survives and continues the function by means of adaptation. Only during extreme conditions, the cell fails to withstand the hazardous factors which results in destruction and death of the cell. Cellular adaptation occurs by any of the following mechanisms. 1. Atrophy 2. Hypertrophy 3. Hyperplasia 4. Dysplasia 5. Metaplasia Atrophy Atrophy means decrease in size of a cell. Atrophy of more number of cells results in decreased size or wasting of the concerned tissue, organ, or part of the body. Causes of atrophy Atrophy is due to one or more number of causes such as, poor nourishment, decreased blood supply, lack of workload or exercise, loss of control by nerves or hormones, intrinsic disease of the tissue or organ. Types of atrophy Atrophy is of two types, physiological atrophy and pathological atrophy. Examples of physiological atrophy are the atrophy of thymus in childhood and tonsils in adolescence. The pathological atrophy is common in skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, sex organs, and brain. Hypertrophy Hypertrophy is the increase in the size of a cell. Hypertrophy of many cells results in enlargement or overgrowth of an organ or a part of the body. Hypertrophy is of three types. Physiological hypertrophy Physiological hypertrophy is the increase in size due to increased workload or exercise. The common physiological hypertrophy includes, muscular hypertrophy, increase in bulk of skeletal muscles that occurs in response to strength training exercise. Ventricular hypertrophy, increase in size of ventricular muscles of the heart which is advantageous only if it occurs in response to exercise. Pathological hypertrophy. Increase in cell size in response to pathological changes is called pathological hypertrophy. Example is the ventricular hypertrophy that occurs due to pathological conditions such as high blood pressure, where the workload of ventricles increases. Compensatory hypertrophy. Compensatory hypertrophy is the increase in size of the cells of an organ that occurs in order to compensate the loss or dysfunction of another organ of same type. Examples are the hypertrophy of one kidney when the other kidney stops functioning, and the increase in muscular strength of an arm when the other arm is dysfunctional or lost. Hyperplasia Hyperplasia is the increase in number of cells due to increased cell division, mitosis. It is also defined as abnormal or unusual proliferation, multiplication, of cells due to constant cell division. Hyperplasia results in gross enlargement of the organ. Hyperplasia involves constant cell division of the normal cells only. Hyperplasia is of three types. Physiological hyperplasia. Physiological hyperplasia is the momentary adaptive response to routine physiological changes in the body. For example, during the proliferative phase of each menstrual cycle, the endometrial cells in uterus increase in number. Compensatory hyperplasia Compensatory hyperplasia is the increase in number of cells in order to replace the damaged cells of an organ or the cells removed from the organ. Compensatory hyperplasia helps the tissues and organs in regeneration. It is common in liver. After the surgical removal of the damaged part of liver, there is increase in the number of liver cells resulting in regeneration. Compensatory hyperplasia is also common in epithelial cells of intestine and epidermis. Pathological hyperplasia Pathological hyperplasia is the increase in number of cells due to abnormal increase in hormone secretion. It is also called hormonal hyperplasia. For example, in gigantism, Hypersecretion of growth hormone induces hyperplasia that results in overgrowth of the body. Dysplasia Dysplasia is the condition characterized by the abnormal change in size, shape, and organization of the cell. Dysplasia is not considered as true adaptation and it is suggested as related to hyperplasia. It is common in epithelial cells of cervix and respiratory tract. Metaplasia Metaplasia is the condition that involves replacement of one type of cell with another type of cell. It is of two types. Physiological metaplasia. Replacement of cells in normal conditions is called physiological metaplasia. 
Examples are transformation of cartilage into bone and transformation of monocytes into macrophages. Pathological metaplasia Pathological metaplasia is the irreversible replacement of cells due to constant exposure to harmful stimuli. For example, chronic smoking results in transformation of normal mucus secreting ciliated columnar epithelial cells into non-ciliated squamous epithelial cells, which are incapable of secreting mucus. These transformed cells may become cancerous cells if the stimulus, smoking, is prolonged. Cell degeneration Cell degeneration is a process characterized by damage of the cells at cytoplasmic level, without affecting the nucleus. Degeneration may result in functional impairment or deterioration of a tissue or an organ. It is common in metabolically active organ like liver, heart, and kidney. Degenerative changes are reversible in most of the cells. Causes for cell degeneration Common causes for cell degeneration, atrophy, hypertrophy, hyperplasia, and slash or dysplasia of cell fluid accumulation in the cell. Fat infiltration into the cell. Calcification of cellular organelles. Cell aging. Cell aging is the gradual structural and functional changes in the cells that occur over the passage of time. It is now suggested that cell aging is due to damage of cellular substances like DNA, RNA, proteins, and lipids, etc. when the cell becomes old. When more cellular substances are damaged, the cellular function decreases. This causes deterioration of tissues, organs, or parts of the body. Finally, the health of the body starts declining and this leads to death. So, the cell aging determines the health and lifespan of the body. Stem cells. Stem cells are the primary cells capable of reforming themselves through mitotic division and differentiating into specialized cells. These cells serve as repair system of the body and are present in all multicellular organisms. Types of stem cells. Stem cells are of two types, embryonic stem cells derived from embryo. Adult stem cells derived from adults. Embryonic stem cells. Embryonic stem cells are derived from the inner cell mass of a blastocyst which is an early stage of embryo. It takes about 4 to 5 days after fertilization to reach the blastocyst stage and it has about 30 to 50 cells. Embryonic stem cells have two important qualities, self-renewal capacity. Pluripotent nature, i.e. these cells are capable of differentiating into all types of cells in ectodermal, endodermal, and mesodermal layers. Because of these two qualities, the embryonic stem cells can be used therapeutically for regeneration or replacement of diseased or destroyed tissues. In fact, embryonic pluripotent stem cells are now cultured and a lot of research is going on to explore the possibility of using these cells in curing the disorders like diabetes mellitus by cell replacement technique. But, ethical issues arise because the embryo has to be destroyed to collect the stem cells. Stem cells from umbilical cord blood Stem cells in umbilical cord blood are collected from the placenta or umbilical cord. Use of these stem cells for research and therapeutic purposes does not create any ethical issue because it does not endanger the life of the fetus or newborn. Because of vitality and easy availability, the umbilical cord blood stem cells are becoming a potent resource for transplant therapies. Nowadays, these stem cells are used to treat about 70 diseases and are used in many transplants worldwide. Adult Stem Cells Embryonic stem cells do not disappear after birth, but remain in the body as adult stem cells and play a role in repair of damaged tissues. However, their number becomes less. Adult stem cells are the undifferentiated multipotent progenitor cells found in growing children and adults. These are also known as somatic stem cells and are found everywhere in the body. These cells are capable of dividing and reforming the dying cells and regenerating the damaged tissues. So, these stem cells can also be used for research and therapeutic purposes. Adult stem cells are collected from bone marrow. Two types of stem cells are present in bone marrow hemopoietic stem cells, which give rise to blood cells, Chapter 10. Bone marrow stromal cells, which can differentiate into cardiac and skeletal muscle cells. Advantages of stem cells 
Adult stem cells from bone marrow are used in bone marrow transplant to treat leukemia and other blood disorders since 30 years. Recently, it is known that these stem cells can develop into nerve cells, liver cells, skeletal muscle cells and cardiac muscle cells. Recent discoveries also reveal that the stem cells are present in several tissues which include blood, blood vessels, skeletal muscle, liver, skin, and brain. It is also found that these cells are capable of differentiating into multiple cell types. So, the cell-based therapy using stem cells may be possible to treat many diseases such as heart diseases, diabetes, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, spinal cord injury, stroke, and rheumatoid arthritis.